forests cover two-thirds of Alabama and are a major part of the state's cultural and economic heritage. Not only do forests provide us with clean air, clean water, wildlife habitat, and recreation, they also provide the wood to make paper, plywood, lumber, chemicals, and a host of other products. These are products the citizens of Alabama depend on every day to build their homes, print the daily paper, and even cure a headache. The wood to make these many products comes from harvesting forests. Approximately 250,000 acres of trees are harvested each year in Alabama. Because over 70% of the state's forests belong to private non-industrial owners, the vast majority of timber used to supply the public's need for wood comes from private forests. These are forests owned by a broad spectrum of citizens, like farmers, school teachers, and construction workers, many of whom have inherited forests that were passed down through several generations. Alabama's non-industrial private forest owners value their forests not only for timber production, but also beauty, wildlife, and recreation. For the most part, they are very conscientious managers, realizing that proper forest stewardship and sustained productivity requires the planned regeneration of harvested trees. Hi, my name is Ken McNabb and I'm an Extension Forester with the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service at Auburn University. If we are to continue to enjoy the many benefits that forests provide us, then it is necessary to regenerate them after harvest. Fortunately, the climate and soil conditions in Alabama are very conducive to forest regeneration. This stand behind me is a typical example. Following a complete clear cut four years ago, it now has three to 4,000 actively growing stems per acre. However, the cut and leave method is not a good way to regenerate after harvesting. By just letting a stand grow back like this, it may become dominated by species of little commercial value, relatively slow growth, and generally low productivity. Fortunately, landowners have a number of forest regeneration options that will help them achieve their forest management objectives. Some forest owners prefer to regenerate using intensive management, such as preparing cutover lands with machines or herbicides. Although this type of forest management is very productive, it is usually quite expensive and the primary objective is timber production. There are other methods, however, that can provide landowners with a low-cost forest regeneration alternative. These less intensive methods are often better suited to landowners with objectives other than timber production. Most forest management in Alabama deals with the growing and harvesting of pines. Fortunately, pines can be managed using natural regeneration techniques, which rely on existing seedlings in the understory at the time of harvest, or seed fall from trees left on the site at the time of harvest. Natural regeneration has the advantages of being relatively inexpensive, more aesthetically pleasing, and requiring less labor and heavy equipment. When using natural regeneration, the most important factor is planning. To ensure success, natural regeneration must be planned before existing trees are removed. The first step in regenerating pine is to determine if a stand is suitable for natural regeneration. Trees must be healthy with little or no evidence of diseases like pitch canker or fusiform rust like what we see here. Seed trees will need to be mature, 30 years and older, 12 to 15 inches in diameter, and with crowns large enough to provide a good seed crop. The landowner should be regenerating with the best genetic stock available. The amount and type of hardwood competition at the time of harvest is an important criteria for determining whether or not a site is suitable for the natural regeneration of pine. Pine have small seed that require bare mineral soil and lots of sunlight to grow. If a stand has a thick hardwood understory, this competition must be removed for successful seed catch and seedling establishment. Necessary treatments may be as simple as prescribed burning or as intensive as chemical or mechanical site preparation combined with a burn. The intensity of these treatments may determine whether natural regeneration is actually a low cost option.
If site conditions are suitable, there are several natural regeneration options. One option is the seed tree method, where all the trees in a stand are harvested, except for a select number of individuals that will be the seed source for the next forest. Loblolly, shortleaf, and slash pine are well suited to the seed tree method due to usually abundant and consistent seed crops. The number of seed trees needed will vary depending on species and tree size. Usually four to 12 evenly spaced seed trees per acre are desirable for loblolly and slash pines, while 12 to 20 are used with shortleaf pine. The individuals selected as seed trees should be the best trees in the stand. The largest dominant individuals with good straight trunks, few branches, and healthy crowns. After adequate regeneration is established, usually in three to five years, the seed trees can be harvested. The shelterwood method is another natural regeneration technique that can be used with pines and is particularly valuable for longleaf pine, which has heavier seed and more erratic seed crops. This method uses a two or three cut approach to removing the existing stand. If seed production is inadequate, a preparatory cut is used to stimulate seed production. When seed production is adequate, the preparatory cut is not used. The second cut, or cut to shelter wood, further reduces the number of trees to between 20 and 40 per acre. Or once adequate regeneration is established, like this young longleaf seedling here, then the final crop trees can be removed. The shelter wood method is particularly beneficial for the natural regeneration of oaks. A two-cut system can be used. The objective is to promote the growth of existing oak seedlings by gradually opening the canopy, but not so much that the remaining trees begin to sprout along the main stem. This is called epicormic branching and can seriously decrease the value of the wood. Once the young seedlings are several feet tall, well-established, and above the competition, the crop trees can be removed. Clear-cut harvesting can also be used to naturally regenerate pine. The new forest can come from seedlings in place prior to the harvest, seed in place that germinate after the harvest, or the site can seed in from adjacent areas. Loblolly and slash pine seed can wind disperse for up to 200 feet. To be successful, natural regeneration following clear-cut harvesting must be timed just right. For a seed in place regeneration system, the harvest should occur after seed fall, but prior to germination. This will be a November to March harvest. For a seedling in place system, the harvest should occur in late summer, following a good seed year. The most widely used method to naturally regenerate commercial hardwoods is clear cutting. This method provides the conditions necessary for the growth and development of species such as yellow poplar, ash, cottonwood, sycamore, and many others which do best in full sunlight. The stand is regenerated from both seed and sprouts. In general, hardwoods are good sprouters, but some species, such as the oaks, sprout less as they get older. In this case, other measures are needed to promote the establishment of understory seedlings that will regenerate the site when the canopy is removed. Another low-cost natural regeneration method is the selection system, also called uneven aged management. This system manages seedlings, saplings, and large trees simultaneously by harvesting individual trees or small groups of trees in the stand as they mature. Managing pine using the selection system is not easy, however, primarily because pine require abundant light for vigorous growth. It will require frequent and persistent treatments of invading hardwoods to ensure pine regeneration and development. Unlike pine, hardwoods such as we have here in this small creek bottom are very conducive to uneven age management. Many hardwoods are shade tolerant and can therefore come up in the small gaps created by individual tree harvests. This system must be exercised with caution, however. If a selection system is in 